Hello, my name is John Ferguson. I'm a senior systems engineer with the vFabric team here at VMware. And today I want to talk about our cloud application platform. Specifically, I'd like to talk about TC Server, our product that helps you run your applications more effectively and efficiently. But why are we doing that? I mean, if the old adage, if it ain't broke, don't fix it applies, we've been running applications and web applications for over a decade. We've seen companies grow and be successful on the old versions of runtime servers. Why are we actually having this conversation? Well, the reality is, is that, yes, people have been successful, but there are significant challenges that we need to start meeting and we need to start finding solutions to as we start to move into the new cloud era. Well, what are some of those challenges? What do we need to fix that we haven't been able to fix before? Part of this is legacy applications. Over time, we've incurred this idea of technical debt. Legacy applications that are sitting around taking up mental space, taking up physical space on servers, there's some major challenges that these legacy applications are causing us to need to meet. The first one is that building them is simply too slow. It's difficult to build these applications. Trying to test them is very difficult because they're overly complex. There's a lot of moving pieces. The code is tightly coupled to a specific set of middleware or a specific set of hardware or both. And trying to refactor them to take advantage of advances in software engineering over the past few years is difficult. Another big piece of this, though, is that they're far too expensive to maintain. They run on proprietary platforms, and a lot of people are spending their valuable time performing manual operations and keeping the lights on. Our infrastructure is over-provisioned to meet peak demand, but we have to pay for that all year round. This means high support and maintenance costs, and really it's a result of what I call unreal-world licensing. The idea that we can't have our systems you know, pay for the average use, we have to pay for the over-provisioned peak use. And that's just not right. We need to find a way to find a real licensing model that allows us to pay for what average use or what we're actually using is. But the third, and I think the biggest challenge here, is we're having trouble meeting business needs. We have significant architecture limitations, technology that either doesn't scale or forces us to stay on a specific set of hardware. Some of these things don't allow us to start taking advantages of the things that exist now in software engineering. We also have a lack of agility. It's difficult sometimes for our applications to react to major changes in the market, changes in the business, or maybe changes in regulation. We're finding performance and availability are problems because these weren't maybe the first things we thought of when we built our applications. And then a really big problem here is we can't just scale both scaling out to meet demand, but scaling in when our demand drops to relinquish resources back to a resource pool. So we need to try to meet these challenges from building our applications and also from having a great lightweight way to run those applications. But why do we want to think about lightweight? Well, in a quote from Forrester, they said, too many clients spend far too much time and effort trying to find the products with the most features. Lean shops look for just enough, no more. What is lean? Lean is this concept that we're looking for value. We want to have something in our technology that gives us just enough features, but really helps us from a costs perspective. IT organizations are charged with delivering better services these days, but typically it's with reduced funding. So we need to find a way to get ourselves lean, to get ourselves more cost effective. Now, when you look at what a commercial application server for Java provides, Typically, it's the full Java EE specification. It's all of that and a competitive feature set. Most applications don't actually require that. So we have this challenge where we need to find things to help us be lean. We want to find an application server that implements the specific pieces that we need and provide some useful features to help us realize operational efficiency. So this is what we want to do today. This is what's broken and what we need to start fixing. We need to meet our three challenges of a difficult time building, too much expense, and we're not able to meet business needs. And we want to do this with the idea of a lean application and lean infrastructure. So 
Today, our presentation is probably going to take about 45 minutes or so. And I just want to make sure that I've got that time. Great. Well, let's start by looking at the different pieces that make up our TC Server product. We have Spring, it's a framework for building applications. Tomcat is an open source project that helps us run our applications. And then we'll talk about what VMware adds to it, how VMware can really help us realize significant gains in effectiveness and efficiency. At the same time, we'll talk about tools to help us monitor not only the applications, not only the infrastructure, but both, as well as ways to realize operational efficiency from a management perspective. So let's start with Spring. Spring is a modern framework designed to help us realize gains in the realm of productivity. Now, a modern framework really is a collection of design patterns, enterprise design patterns, with some actual code behind them that you can use. We've heard about Spring before, but do people actually use it? There are 3 million developers across the globe using the Spring framework today. And in fact, 50% of applications that are running on WebSphere, WebLogic, and Tomcat are Spring apps. And over 80% of organizations with large development teams are leveraging the Spring Framework for their business-critical applications. There are big names out there using the Spring Framework. LinkedIn, Vanguard, Visa, HSBC, Aetna, and this is just to name a few. Indeed has had this really great trend that's been showing the amount of times that Spring is listed in job descriptions. So people are using Spring. They're leveraging it to build business critical applications to find efficiency and effectiveness in development. But what does it do? How does Spring actually help us do that? Well, it combines two really key features to make it an effective modern framework. It combines the idea of portability. Now portability from the perspective of I want to build an application today and run it in my private cloud or my private data center. But in the future, if I want to move to a public cloud, if I want to leverage the idea of a public cloud, I want to make sure that the investments I make today are not wasted. I want to make sure that my applications run on those public clouds in the future. And that's what Spring does really well. It provides a layer of abstraction to loosely couple our application code from the underlying hardware. So you could run it in a private data center, but you could also run it in the public cloud and it would run fine in either of those places. Now we combine that portability with productivity. And what this means is that we're allowing developers to focus not on technical challenges, but on business problems. Orbitz is a company that's using the Spring framework. And in a quote from one of their technical leads, they said, as we've moved to Spring, which allows our developers to do less work on the infrastructure, we can focus more on the business logic and features that make us competitive. Because isn't that what we're trying to do? We're trying to leverage our applications and our technology to be more competitive. It needs to be the center of our competitive strategy. And the Spring Framework allows us to do that by protecting our investments in the future and allowing us to focus on business problems. Now, people will throw out the statistic that the Spring Framework makes developers 50% more productive. I can actually stand behind that quote, because before I came to VMware, I used to work at a financial firm. Now, we were charged with developing an application, and when we did all the estimates out, we saw that it would take about 12 months to build. So we went to the business, and we showed them the feature set, and we discussed the, the time frame, and they said, well, this is everything we need to meet a change that we see coming in the market. Unfortunately, based on our analysis, we see that change coming in 8 months, not 12. Now this obviously is the first time that the business has asked AppDev to deliver an application ahead of schedule. So we went back to the drawing board. We said, what can we do to make ourselves more effective? And what we did is we had used the Spring Framework in smaller projects, but we decided to make it the core of our project here. Six months later, we had an application in production. Not only did we beat our estimates by 12 months, but we beat the business need by two months. Sorry, but we beat, a, we beat ours by 50%, but we beat the business need by two months. So when someone says the Spring Framework makes developers 50% more productive, I can actually vouch for that because I've seen it in action. Now, what are you guys using for some of your frameworks today? How are you building your applications? Great. 
Let's talk about Tomcat. Now that we've built our applications leveraging the Spring Framework, we need a place to run them. And Tomcat is the core technology to RTC server that allows us to run our applications. Now, it's lean. It's helping us embrace this idea of just enough, of trying to find a way to get value, combining just enough with the right cost. And that's value for us. Tomcat is a lean machine. It's an implementation of only two specs out of the Java EE specification. It's Java Servlet and Java Server Pages. It's a lean machine because if you look at the memory committed at startup, you've got something like maybe 14, 15 megs. When you compare that with other competitors, people like WebSphere, WebLogic, JBoss, we're blowing them out of the water from a memory committed at startup perspective. But why is something like that important? Well, if we're running in a virtualized environment, we definitely want to rise and grow our consolidation ratios. We want to be able to pack more virtual machines on a physical host. But if we need to commit 150, 250 megs of memory to just a base installation of a server, well, we're not going to realize significant consolidation. With something like TC Server and the underlying Tomcat technology, if it's clocking in at about 15 megs of space for, for memory, well, that's pretty low. That will help us realize significant consolidation ratios. Now, what's been interesting is that some of our competitors have realized this, and they've released other alternatives or other flavors of their web application servers. The only problem is, is that Sure, they may have driven down some of, their, some of their, their memory footprints, but the amount of space they take up, as well as the cost, are two major things that haven't changed for them, and in fact, have actually increased. So, we've made impact on our competitors, and they're reacting to what we've brought to the market, but they still simply can't compete with what we do and how we do it. But are people using Tomcat, if it's just a couple features. We said it's just Java servlet and Java server pages. People aren't going to use that, right? It's not enough features. 68% of people in an Evans data survey said they use Tomcat for their Java applications. That's more than WebLogic and JBoss combined. In a quote from Information Week, they said the adoption of Tomcat, of Tomcat reflects the Java developer's preference for lighter, simpler technologies. This survey really does show that. But what I thought was really interesting was if you look at the percentage of Spring applications across all of these servers, we see that it clocks in at about 50%. This is really an indication that people are starting to build with new frameworks, build with Spring, and they're moving to Tomcat. They're embracing this idea of lean, and they're embracing this idea of value. Because Tomcat, in its different flavors, is where people run their business. Now, what are you guys using to run your applications today? What kind of application servers do you guys have in-house? Great. Well, let's move on and talk about VMware. Talk about what VMware brings to the table and how it takes Tomcat and makes it a core piece of our TC server product. What we do is we take the Tomcat runtime and we put that right at the center of TC server. That's our lean profile. That's our lean application server. On top of that, though, we've combined it with mean enterprise features, things to do management better, things to provide diagnostics and monitoring, things like in-memory session replication, which is a key technology, and then kind of a catch-all for some of the smaller features that alone maybe aren't useful, but together really make some impact that we're just going to call enterprise features. So let's dig into some of these things. If we look at in-memory session replication, we're talking about the idea of shopping cart data and sharing that data across different instances of TC Server. What happens is when a customer comes into an application and they're putting things in a shopping cart, the server that they're working with may go down. Now, if you don't have any kind of session replication, then when they get moved to a new server as part of load balancing, as part of, of working in a cluster, their information's just gone. If you have session replication, then when they get there, maybe they have to wait a little bit, but their session gets reconstituted and they're ready to go. 
Typically what happens is session information will get stored down in a database or stored on disk somewhere and then reconstituted. But the problem there is that there's a degradation in the customer experience. People don't get their information right away. They have to wait. It's a little bit of a lag. What we're trying to do is leverage our Gemfire technology, which is a great technology for doing in-memory data grids, and use it in conjunction with TC Server to replicate out that session information within the TC Server nodes. It's going to be in-memory. So instead of having somebody wait for their data, their data is already there waiting for them. We're eliminating things like disk-based I.O. and simply, it just works. You set up your TC server instance with the right templates and the right jars, and you just say, I want this to work this way. Now we can do it in multi, you know, different topologies. We can work with multicast. We can set it up with what we call a locator, which coordinates all the different Gemfire pieces. We can solve a lot of different problems around session replication. But the key here is that it just worked right out of the box. With very little configuration, you can get in-memory session replication up and running and not ever have to worry about losing any data and in reality, losing any revenue. Now let's talk about some of the enterprise features that we were mentioning before. One of them is advanced provisioning. And this is the idea that we can start to template things together. We can start to build a template that encapsulates all of our best practices. However, what we've done and what we consider to be a significant contribution here is we've actually pre-packaged a lot of very useful templates. Things like non-blocking I.O. or SSL that needs to be set up. We've already done a lot of the configuration and it's built into these templates. At the same time, we're centralizing our TC server installation. So if you need to patch it or you need to update it, you can update it in one place and all the nodes on that machine get updated. We have an enterprise-ready stable release. What it really means, though, is that we've pre-built it, we've pre-certified it, we've pre-tuned it, and it's secure. We've added some features to really make this more secure than Tomcat. But let's say you started to use TC Server, and you were like, you know what, I just want to move to Tomcat. We believe in the idea of zero lock-in. If you want to move right to Tomcat, you can go ahead and do that, because we provide full binary application compatibility. At the same time, if you're already using Tomcat and you want to move to TC Server, your applications are just going to run. One of the really unique things that we bring to the table, though, is that many of the core committers for the Tomcat project actually already work at VMware. Now, some other people can claim this and some other companies can claim that they have some core committers, but 80% of, of the commits that occurred over the past two years have come from people at VMware and 95% of the bug fixes have come from us as well. What that means for you as a customer is that if something comes up where there's a security vulnerability or a bug, we can apply a patch and a bug fix to you before anybody else. Now, because we believe in open source, we're also going to contribute that bug fix back to the community upstream to the Tomcat project. But you as a customer, as the client, get a very unique feature here, a very unique way of support because we can provide you the support for an open source project that very few people can even think about doing. Now that's really great. There's some nice enterprise features here. In reality, what we've done is you can get all of the stuff with Tomcat already. You can get templates, you can get TC server centralized or Tomcat centralized, but what we do is we make it easy for you. You don't have to go through a significant amount of configuration, a significant amount of work. This stuff is just built in and ready to go. But what else? What else does VMware do? Well, one of the most difficult things to do with Java workloads in a virtualized environment is try and improve your consolidation ratios. You see, when we try to deal with resources that are under contention in a physical host, things like memory, for instance, We've gone ahead and done some really great advances to make our technologies allow you to overcommit resources. It's not like all the virtual machines are going to be pegged at 100% CPU and are utilizing 100% memory. We can start to do some things where we can share memory across those virtual machines. However, when it comes to Java workloads, we're not able to do that very effectively. And this is because one of the techniques we use is the idea of deduplication. 
so that when you store something in memory, like a, an operating system file or something like that, we can actually deduplicate it on the physical host so it takes up less physical memory. With a JVM, though, we can't communicate that information back to the host. So what we've done is we've come up with this thing called Elastic Memory for Java, or EM for J. What it does is it installs a, a memory balloon inside the heap space. When you allocate your heap space with a traditional JVM, what it does is it physically allocates all of that memory on the physical host. What the memory balloon does is it fills in that heap space with a bunch of zeros. Now the host can leverage its deduplication technology to store that stuff in memory on the physical host, but in a fraction of the amount of space. Then, when you need to start actually using some of that memory, that balloon deflates and shrinks back down to allow that heap space to be actually used. Another great benefit to that, though, is that as you're starting to balloon out your memory balloon and you're starting to apply memory pressure on the JVM, on the heap, it'll start to invoke garbage collection. Now this can be scary because what we know about garbage collection is that it always happens at exactly the worst time. What we're doing, however, is we're able to leverage statistics that we're gathering from the virtual machine to say, hey, that virtual machine is inactive. I'm going to inflate that memory balloon and have garbage collection start to occur. Now what we're doing is garbage collection is occurring at a time when the JVM is not under load. So now garbage collection occurs at a great time, and whenever we need that space, it's already occurred to free up that memory. Elastic Memory for Java allows us to now overcommit resources on the actual physical host, because we're using this memory balloon to share memory across multiple JVMs. This memory balloon is a common technique, but now we've brought it to the JVM layer. And it's going to activate garbage collection, normally a bad thing, but it's going to do it at exactly the right time, when your VM is not under load. Now we can support up to about four JVMs per virtual machine. And what we've seen based on lab tests as well as working with customers is that about 40% overcommit is the ratio we tend to look for. Obviously, this requires some planning and requires some thinking through about which Java workloads you're putting on what physical hosts and what virtual machines. But if done right, and we can help and work with you to do this right, this can be a very effective tool to improve your consolidation ratios. The last thing that VMware brings to the table that I think is really unique is what I call our real-world licensing model. If you remember in the very beginning, we talked about an Unreal licensing model where you have to pay for your peak load all year round because you have to over-provision everything. When you work with technologies that are built to scale up and scale down, now we can start to leverage things like average usage. So with vFabric Suite, what you do is you pay for what you actually use. And this is the number of VMs that you've had spun up as an average over a period of time. Now typically that period of time is about 90 days and there's a true up period. But what this really allows you to do is control your costs. If you know you need to meet demand in the middle or the end of November because that's when you get a huge spike in demand, great. Your systems can scale up, that average number starts to, to creep up, but if during the rest of the year you're at 25 percent of the peak number, your average number is going to be pretty low. Now you're talking about actually paying for what you really use. And that is what the real world is like. That's why this licensing model is very good for people who are trying to find better ways to control their cost. Because now you pay for what you use instead of just paying for over-provisioned peak all year round. Now let's actually take some time to look at TC Server in action. What I'd like to do is show you how easy it is to get TC Server up and running, and show you some of the memory, the in-memory session replication tooling. So I'm actually going to go open up a virtual machine that I've got running on this machine. And what I've done is I've pulled down a tar file. This is TC server. But one of the interesting things was if I could get TC server up and running, ready to go, in under 60 seconds, would that be something interesting to see? Let's see if we can do it. 
first I'm going to untar everything. So I'm going to open this up, and now I've got vFabric TC server. I've got an actual directory. I'm going to use one of these shell scripts to create a new TC server instance. And it's going to go, and it's going to start it, and it's going to get it ready, and it's going to go through it, and boom, 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 we're done. Okay, well, let's actually go into this thing. So we called it my server, and I need to change one of the comp files in here. So I'm going to change Catalina properties, which is where these properties are. And I want to change this to 3. I'm going to change these numbers around just because I don't want to have any conflicting um, ports. And now I'm going to actually start the server. And if I go to Firefox, you can see now that I'm on 8380, which is the port that I changed it to, and I've got TC server up and running. Let me refresh it again. This is TC server running on this virtual machine where I said it was all set up. Now, how did I do that? Let's actually look at the pieces that went into making this. So if I ls again, and you know what, let's clear this just to make it more clear. There's a templates folder. And let's look in there. These are the kinds of templates that come with TC Server that you can use right out of the box. If I go into one, let's say Elastic Memory, this kind of looks like some of the pieces to a regular Tomcat installation. If I look in lib, you can see there's a balloon.jar. This is our balloon driver. And this is what allows us to do elastic memory for Java. There's nothing else in here, but it's because this is a template that we're using to apply against a base installation to create our actual TC server runtime. Now what I care about here really is two other major things. TC runtime CTL, which is a shell script for controlling our TC server runtimes, and TC runtime instance, which is what I use to actually create that server. So I'm going to create the server again, but I'm going to give it a new name. We're going to say create, and we'll call it my server 2. Now it's going to go out, and it's going to apply any some of the base templates that it has. It's going to apply the blocking I.O. template. I didn't specify any template, but if I wanted to, I could just add a, a dash T and tell it which one I wanted to, to use. Now if I go into my server 2, and I look at the conf directory, I want to change the port. And normally I do that in server.xml. But if I look down here at the connector in server XML, I could see that it's actually parameterized. So this means that there's a properties file somewhere that has this port. And this is what's great about TC server. I actually have a properties file called catalina.properties that has all of the parameterized parameters in it. So let's say I want to change this to 8480 and I'm going to make this uh, 9969 and I'm going to make this um, 9443. But 8480, that's where we're going to run this TC server. I'm going to go back up and look at TC Runtime CTL, which is really just short for control. And I'm going to say my server 2 start. I click go it goes into that Tomcat, it starts Tomcat, it starts, you know, it gets everything up and running, and now I've got a running TC server. So if I go back to Firefox, and I change this to 8480, I should see the same screen. That's because this is TC server, standard edition, up and running. Now that's pretty cool, right? I mean, we just went from, from having nothing, just a tar file, to installing it, setting it up, changing a configuration, and actually starting it and I did it the first time in about 60 seconds or so, that's really easy. And that's what TC Server does, is provides a very easy way to get Tomcat up and running. Now, let's talk about session replication. What I've done is I've got two TC Server instances up and running, and they're both running this application called Cluster Test. <clears throat> what I want to be able to do is put something in in Server 1 and have it show up in the session in Server 2. So I'm going to say, my key is 1, my value is 1. So I submit it, it's in server 1, but let me look at server 2. If I refresh this, I have key 1 and value 1 here. I can go the other way too. If I want to store it on server 2, 
Now I can go back to server 1 and I see it there. At the same time, I may have had a value get put in by one server, but now they've been moved to this server and I need to change that value. So key 2 is put in by server 2 and I'm going to change the value of it. If I go back over here, your values are boring. <laughs> This allows us to share that session information in memory and have our data waiting for people instead of having our people waiting for data. So this is just a quick demo of how you can get TC server up and running and how in-memory session replication can work. Is there any questions or anything you guys are interested in? Okay, let's move on. What we want to start to answer now though is What's going on with my application? How can I monitor my application? And how can I monitor my infrastructure, my TC servers? Well, in order to answer the question, how's my application, we have a product called Spring Insight. Spring Insight provides some visibility into response times for specific endpoints, throughput trends, and it leverages instrumented bytecode. So if you're running Spring, it just comes out of the box. And if you run Spring applications on TC server, it just works. Now there are other technologies that we can leverage plugins for to get the same kind of monitoring on, but this is just a great way to, to get some visibility into what's going on. Developers can leverage this to be more effective because Spring Insight comes with the developer's edition of TC Server. If they're running their Spring applications on a developer's machine, they don't have to build their application and put it out in a performance or a staging area. They can just use Spring Insight to find out, hey, I made this one change. How does that affect my response time? How does that affect my throughput? They can start to get performance metrics before they even commit their application code into source control. And that can be very effective for helping to squash bugs and performance issues before they even get into any kind of build. Now on the other side of that is Hyperic. Hyperic is a great tool for getting diagnostics information. Something maybe as simple as availability, or maybe you want how much heap memory is actually free. But where Hyperic starts to really shine is in the ability to provide a notification system. So if you look in the screenshot here, we have an event, slow query. We can set it up so that when that event gets fired, a notification email can be sent to someone on an operations team, and they can take some kind of an action. Now in a perfect world, you don't need monitoring. Applications just run and infrastructure is always up and being used 100% correctly. But in the real world, you want to be proactive instead of reactive. And a tool like Hyperic that gives you this visibility and comes with notifications can allow you to be that. But let's look at the other side of monitoring, which is management. How can we start to manage our TC server instances not in a single instance, but in the idea of a group or a cluster. What we can do is we can leverage Hyperic to deploy our applications out to a set or a group of TC servers. We can push our war applications out to this group in either a hot deploy, or we can do it in a cold deploy where we stop the server, deploy the application, and restart the server. This allows us to manage the full application lifecycle by being able to do the initial deploy, do an update and as through the life cycle of the application, and then finally do an undeploy to retire these resources. However, at the same time, we can get granular. We can get down to specific TC server instances to change things like ports, to do configuration around authentication, as well as change memory settings. We can start to build up resources and use things like JDBC pools, as well as services like Catalina. So we can look at everything from an overall perspective and we can look at everything from a granular perspective. But where Hyperic starts to really perform some interesting utility <clears throat> is as a client broker. We may have other systems that need to get information about our TC server instances. Maybe one's a command line client, maybe another is a REST client, or maybe another is a Java one. What Hyperic can do is it can sit in the middle and in leveraging things like the Hyperic Query API and another tool called TCS Admin we can send commands, we can pull metrics, we can do all sorts of different things. Maybe a command line client is part of a build process and it needs to stop a TC server and deploy an application and then restart it. Maybe we've got a REST client that's pulling monitoring metric queries out of Hyperic. 
or maybe we've got some kind of inter you know, external inventory system that's pulling in Hyperic's auto-discovered resources, and that's a Java application. Hyperic can sit at the center of that and provide a way to execute all of those different types of functionality. But you know what? Let's actually see it in action. Let's look at it from a, a demo perspective, because obviously I'm a glutton for punishment. What I want to show you first, though, is Hyperic. This is Hyperic, and in fact, what this is, is it's a view, actually, of a group of TC servers that I've already pre-configured that has two TC servers in it, one called Node 1 and one called Node 2. Now, I can see and look at these indicators of what my TC servers are doing. Are there any deadlocks? Is there any heat memory free? What's the percent uptime in garbage collection? Um, what's my overall uptime? This is as a group, as a whole, and this allows me to get information about my application as a full system, not just a single node. Now that said, I can dig into each individual node and start to see these metrics at that specific level, but I've grouped them all together to make it easy to do this. If I go into Views and I go into Application Management, we can see the screen that I was looking at before. I can deploy an application out to multiple servers. And as you can see here for the Booking-MVC app, two of two servers are running, and this is how many sessions are on each. We can deploy these apps. We can do it from a remote machine. There's all sorts of other different things that we can do. But let's maybe get some information about these this TC servers group from the command line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here. Now what I've done is I've downloaded this utility from Hyperic. It actually comes with Hyperic and you can just grab it. It's called TCS Admin. And it's a way to execute commands against Hyperic that then get farmed out to all the TC servers, either to do some management or do some extraction of data. Now what I'd like to do now is I want to list out the groups here. What I do, so it's gone out to Hyperic, it said, hey, I've got one group, it's called TC Servers. Okay, that's great. Well, what about um, listing the servers and within the group name TC Servers? So it's going to go out, it's going to say, hey, in the group TC Servers, what are the servers actually inside that group? It comes back and it says, hey, it's Node 1 and Node 2. Well, that's what we had in Hyperic before. But maybe I want to know the applications that are running there. So I say list the applications, and the group name is TC Servers. This is going to go ask Hyperic, what applications do you have running on that group? It's going to say, hey, I've got Inside Agent, Booking MVC, Cluster Test, and Root. So we can leverage this command line interface to get information from Hyperic. Or we can leverage Hyperic from a UI perspective to get information about our applications. Either way, what we're able to do is we're able to monitor and we're able to manage our applications as well as our TC server. This provides some really great operational efficiency by allowing your operations teams to focus on an easy way to manage and monitor your applications. Now, TC server comes in three editions. There's a developer's edition that you can go out today and grab. If you go download Spring Source Tool Suite, which is an Eclipse-based IDE for building Java applications, TC Server comes with it. You can just use it today, and all it does is it provides the Tomcat runtime, or the TC runtime, with the Spring Insight application, so that you can realize efficiency levels at your developer level. But the TC servers that you'd want to run for your applications are Standard Edition and Spring Edition. Now, Standard Edition is everything we've talked about today except for Spring Insight. If you're running Spring applications or you want to get insight into your actual code level metrics, the Spring Edition is what you'd need to upgrade to. Those two, Standard Edition and Spring Edition, typically come part of the vFabric suite. The Developer's Edition, you can go out and download today and you can use it. The other two, we can talk about the suite and talk about how that can help you really gain some efficiencies around your applications. Now, here's an opportunity where if you guys have any questions before I sort of finish everything up, uh, what are those questions? What are things that you guys want to know? Are there any, is there anything that I haven't covered today?
Okay, great. So just to kind of summarize what we've talked about today, we talked about the Spring framework. It's a modern framework that allows you to build applications more effectively and efficiently. We talked about Tomcat, an open source project under the Apache Software Foundation that really is a lean machine designed to run your applications with just enough, providing the right amount of value. And then we talked about what VMware adds to that, how VMware can provide functionality around Tomcat that really makes it enterprise ready. And then we talked about monitoring tools, Spring Insight and Hyperic, to give you information about what your applications are doing, how, they're, how they've been doing, and start to predict how they're going to do. And then we'll talk, we talked about management tools, the ability to manage your infrastructure, not from a single instance perspective, but from a multi-instance perspective. To be able to leverage Hyperic as the center of your, your information so that you can get information about your, your pieces, about TC server, about your applications, but also issue commands and, and do activities on those TC servers. When you start to combine all of these things, what you get is our TC server product. It's a place where you can run your business, you can run your applications effectively and efficiently. Now, if you have any questions or something that I haven't covered that you'd like to get into, feel free to email me at fergusonj at vmware.com or look at vmware.com. Our website is chock full of information on TC Server as well as the other products in our vFabric suite. Now, what I'd recommend as next steps is let's explore some of the challenges that you guys are having with running your applications. Let's look at what you've got for applications and what you have for runtime servers and how VMware can partner with you to start to help you build and modernize your application stack. Thank you so much for your time today. I hope this was educational and interesting, and I really look forward to working with you in the new year. Thanks.